So what we're going to be looking at is the LED readout right here. So let's power on. What we're looking for is the D4 debug LED code. And the purpose of this video is why we get the D4. We've solved it, but we want to show you what you would see. And we're going to go past it. And then we're going to spin this around and look at this. We're going to change the orientation of the board so you can see how we solved it. Now we heard it post. So now we're going to go into the BIOS. And that was the B4. Okay, now we're into the BIOS. And now you see an A6. So once we're in the BIOS, we need to go to Settings. We're going to go to I.O. Ports. And if you'll notice, above 4G decoding is disabled. We're going to go to Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt support is enabled by default, but we also have changed the default allocation on memory. Now, why is that significant? Well, I want to show you overhead because there's been a hierarchical structure. In other words, there's been a, uh, a prioritization of devices according to their order that they've been associated with. And three things solve that problem. And that's what I want to explain to you by, by looking at this overhead. Oh, by the way, this is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. I want to thank you for joining us. Cool, huh? And this is about solving the D4 out of PCI Express resources. Let's take a look at the manual. Now, if we look in the manual, we've got a list in the appendix of the debug LED codes. And the code we're looking for is the D4. And the D4 error is PCI Express resource allocation error out of resources. Which, as we all know, that's absolutely impossible because we're on the Gigabyte TRX40 designated motherboard. And we have plenty of PCI Express resources. The problem is not the PCI Express resources, as it says. The problem is a memory issue. So then the question is, how do we solve that memory issue? Well, first I want to explain the problem. Uh, then we'll talk about the solution, how we solved it. So let's go overhead. Okay, here we have the code. I'm going to change the board back around so that we can look at this the way we're used to looking at it. Where that way all the slots are over here next to me. And I've got the system up in the BIOS. Now remember, we have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots. And I just happen to have everything backwards for a reason. The reason being, this is a uh, EVGA RTX 2080 Ti. It is two slots wide. Because it's two slots wide, I can still get to this 8-lane slot down here. The expectation has always been the video card goes in the first 16-lane slot. The RS M.2 goes in the second 16-lane slot. And the prioritization has always been with the video card and then with the Thunderbolt card. So they go like this. They don't go like this. Until we updated the firmware on the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card, we could not put it in the second 8-lane slot. Nor could we change the orientation such that we have everything now backwards. And the reason I have this backwards, we've got some other tests we're going to do with the M.2 card where I've got to get it up out of the case. So while we're doing this who's on first thing, uh, we solved several problems by updating the firmware on that Thunderbolt 3 card, which was kind of a bear. It was a dog and pony show, but, uh, you know, patience, persistence, and perseverance got us where we're at right now. But anyway, to reiterate, by doing what we've done and updating the firmware, we're able to change the orientation of that card so they're no longer tied together. Meaning, back to the issue of uh, a PCI Express resource allocation error, we have enough PCI Express lanes what we did not have was memory allocated for the devices. Now, we can allocate memory for the video card, and we should, setting in a BIOS, but we haven't yet because we want to prove what's the thing that solved the problem. Number one, the firmware update on the card. Number two, we allocated memory in the BIOS that I'll show you in a minute also for the card. Number three, which I'm not sure to a lesser degree, but still is relevant, to turn off CSM. That's for backwards compatibility support. So by doing that, we've taken that chain, we freed those cards up so we can change the allocation. So for anyone asking, can I put my video card in the first 16 lane slot because say you've got an RTX 3090 and can I put the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card in the last eight lane slot? Absolutely. And for those of you that want to uh, do what we're doing, where we've got an RTX 2080 Ti down here, we put it in the second 16 lane slot with the RSM.2 in the first 16 lane slot for the emissivity test that we still have to do. We have freed up the Thunderbolt 3 card where we can now put it anywhere we want it. We also got USB 2 connected and we're good to go. So when you get into this Thunderbolt 3 thing, it's a real snaky deal. So let's look in the BIOS about what's got to be done. So we first get into the BIOS, we'll go to settings, we'll go to IO ports. And if you notice the display, even though it says slot one, it still finds it. I didn't have to change it. 
And if you notice bifurcation for PCI Express by 16 underscore 1, that is where we have the RSM.2 card. So I want you to understand why that bifurcation is set manual for that hybrid BIOS RAID. And that's, that's essential for that card. But for the system to boot and not have issues with this D4 out of PCI Express resources, updating the firmware on the card, updating and allocating more memory for the card. Now, for the systems that we could put a, let's say theoretical, that we could put a Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card in, and this is relevant because going to the next video, we can get partial support, which we've done on the Gigabyte Designare, excuse me, on the Gigabyte uh, X399 motherboard that has the support for it. Uh, partial support meaning we don't have BIOS support, so we can't go in and allocate memory for it. And because uh, the cable is not as crucial with the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3, we can jump pins 3 to 5 to keep the card alive, so we get, again, partial support. What will happen is we d if we don't have full support because we can't allocate memory, some devices may not connect, some devices may not stay connected, and some devices, uh, it may be hit or miss. In other words, you may be able to get it to connect, but you may not be able to keep it connected. It's, it's important to have all that support. And uh, going forward, oh, I, the next video is going to really be interesting because we're going to get into Thunderbolt 4. I'll give you my take on that. That's a can of worms too. But as far as this card goes, we had to allocate memory for it and we had to turn off CSM. Let's go back to the BIOS. So we'll go down here to Thunderbolt 3 and the Thunderbolt configuration. We have, by default, it now enables with this BIOS version of which we've gone to 256 gigs for the memory allocation per port and also for the prefetch memory allocation per port. Both of those are set to 256. And of course the CSM had to be turned off so that we could set up the RAID since we're using the hybrid BIOS RAID. So it, it, this is an amazing platform for what we can do. And I think the biggest question is, how much do you need and how much is it gonna take? In other words, can I do what I want so that I don't have this error again with this D4 out of resource error? The next thing we need to look at, and is an, in another setting I wanna show you in the BIOS that is not enabled, because I wanna show you it's not crucial for this problem, but it may be crucial for others with that same problem on a different platform. Let's take a look in the BIOS. And that would be above 4G decoding. Now right now it's off, but I wanted to show you and prove it's not necessary for this problem that deals with this issue. But going forward, because we have four slots, so we have one slot left, if you're able to use that fourth slot, which is eight lanes, remember that. What are your options that you could put in that fourth slot? Well, could be another video card because it's gotta be two slots wide or less, which could be a couple of RTX 3090s, which means they'll have to have their own separate cooler unless you can get one of the blowers. And for the money, man, I wouldn't buy one of those blower units now because the price, the price on an RTX 3090 is getting near the price of an RTX A6000. So as we go forward, uh, once we get a chance, we can get our hands on the uh, WRX80, hopefully gigabyte motherboard, we may be looking at an A6000 based on price performance. That's, that's another issue we'll deal with later. But, but as we deal with this machine right now on the gigabyte TRX40 designare, We've got our video card in, we've got our M.2 card in, and we have freed up Thunderbolt where it can be used in either eight lane slot. Okay, if we have used those three slots, that fourth slot has a lot of options to us. Uh, plus there's still one, a single one lane slot in there. Another video we're gonna be doing about capture and streaming. My advice, I put a capture streaming card in here that takes up that one slot, that one lane slot, because uh, it's good for 1080, it'll do what you want. Elgato makes the card, it's amazing. We've used it, I've got another video we're gonna do later on that. But for those of you that wanna do 4K, that's a four lane card. There's two cards we're gonna do a video out, we're gonna compare the two. But uh, my advice, my suggestion, I wouldn't use this machine for capturing 4K. I would relegate that to another machine of less capability because even though they're four lane cards, they're still PCI Express 2.0. So it's overkill to put a 4K card in one of these. If you want to capture 4K, which is something else we're going to get into later, after we look at two 4K cards, and there's another 4K card that's coming out that'll do four inputs, four HDMI inputs, also by Elgato. We may do a video on that, but I would suggest when you get to that point, Blackmagic has some equipment that makes a whole lot more sense for doing four inputs, or like the video switch we use, I think we've got, I think we've got 21 inputs. So. You know, lots of possibilities. And for someone that says, you know, well, the Blackmagic video switch is expensive, you need to take a look at a Carbonite video switch. I'll just leave it at that. So back to this issue in the BIOS, once we turn on 4G decoding, 
4G decoding is necessary going forward with a 64-bit processor, but it was not necessary for this problem to solve the D4 error out of PCI Express resources. It's not PCI Express resources, but it was a memory allocation error. So once we updated the BIOS, we allocated the memory on the card, and we disabled CSM, which was already disabled. There's so much going on, we're trying to keep everything separate. So as somebody asks a question and tries to deal with the problem, we've got a solution for it. So as we go forward with this D4, uh, 4G, from the D4 error to the uh, 4G decoding, I'm putting this in here because the 4G decoding is essential going forward, number one, for a 64-bit processor, number two, for a video card that has more than four gigs. And by the way, when was the last time you ran a 32-bit operating system? I'm not talking Windows Vista. For an FYI, when you install Windows from Windows Media Creation Tool, you're in a 32-bit environment. So you've got to get up and crawl before you can walk, before you can run. So until we have a chance to verify it, you may want to leave that 4G decoding off. Building and assembling your system, simple. Keep it simple. Video card, just the bare necessities. Get it up and running, and then start adding your other devices. So if you have an RTX 3090, that one video card, you should be good with 4G decoding turned off. However, when you put in the second one, or when you put in any other I.O. cards, then you need to start looking at the 4G decoding, turn that on. Originally, it was for Tesla cards because they had so much memory on them. It's definitely something you'll want to turn on with an A6000. But again, when we get a chance to build a machine with an A6000, we will again step through all that to make sure what's necessary at each step to make it work at each, at each point. So as we go forward with this, we have uh, taken these three cards and this symbiotic relationship that occurred with video card, Thunderbolt 3, and then Invite 2 card no longer exists since we updated the firmware. So third time I'm telling you because I want that point hammered home. Update the firmware on that Thunderbolt 3 card. We've got a video that goes all through that. Allocate memory in the BIOS for that card and turn off CSM, which you will have already done because of the other stuff we got going on. And the time to turn on 4G decoding, above 4G decoding, if you start having problems and your system won't boot because you can't get into the operating system, that's when you'll need to do it. So next step we're going to do, let's see with that turned off, even though we've gotten through post, let's see if we can get from post into the operating system with 4G decoding, and then we'll find out if it's essential at this step based on how the cards are oriented. So let's go to the next step and see if we can get into the operating system. Okay, we're in the BIOS, so 4G decoding right now is disabled. We're going to leave it that way. We'll press F10, we'll save the setup, and let's see if the system will boot. And once we get the system up and running, then we'll know if that was necessary or not. Getting past post is one issue, but getting into uh, Windows 10, that's a whole other animal. Now once this system is finished, the goal was to put the RTX 3080 in here, but when I do, because it's uh, more than two slots wide, I can't use one of those slots. Okay, I heard a post. Let's see if we'll boot. We'll find out soon enough. And the goal is to find out, is it necessary at this point to have above 4G decoding enabled? Let's see. I see the dial. So for those of you that, while we're waiting on that to boot, that are dealing with this uh, D4 error on other platforms, on other machines, you need to step through the process and simplify it. Make sure just your video card's installed, and then one card at a time. We're in Windows. So the machine booted. Outstanding. Not bad. So we didn't have to have 4G decoding enabled, but uh, going forward, we should enable it. Um, we allocate memory for the video card. We allocate memory for the Thunderbolt 3 card, but we do not allocate memory for the RS M.2 card. So it is what it is. And I do not have any M.2 cards, excuse me, I do not have any M.2 drives on the motherboard, of which I could do four, two to the CPU, two to the chipset. So uh, as we look at this orientation, because I have everything reversed, for those of you that have instead of 321, but you have it 123, meaning the video card is number one, Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 is number two, and the RS M.2 card is number three. Orientation now does not matter. This has been the culprit, getting that firmware updated. And remember, this motherboard is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare. That's a version one card. For those of you that have the second revision of this motherboard, you probably also have the second revision of that Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card. Now that was pretty quick and painless. Okay, I got to tell you right now while we're at it. Okay, coming up in this next video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on Thunderbolt 4. I got to tell you, I was really excited about it when I first heard about it. And I had speculation and an expectation of what I thought was going to happen. And um, I'll just say it's not quite meeting my expectations. It is a can of worms. 
we've got a different pinout we're going to talk about and we're going to do another video after that that's really really important with the time right now about Adobe optimal rendering specs that probably once this next version of the Adobe software comes out uh, this video we're going to share with you is going to be become even more important right now it's uh, it's an FYI to get ready for what's going to happen and based on what's going to happen with the new Adobe specs as hard as it is to get parts I think it's going to get harder because a lot more people are going to be wanting to be building a rendering machine so I want to thank you guys for joining us this is Builder by my name is Gil Boyd on to the next video